Prime Minister assumes duties. Ministers to be sworn in tomorrow. Deadlock over national list appointees resolved. Sajid Premadasa vested with the authority to make a final decision. Samin Sakachakala, Samin Visruna. Kisi Prasna win an app, Ekatin, Eka Eka Balavega Katidin, Abi Samagi Balaveg. Galagodate Nyanasara Terra reveals of a conspiracy within the other power of the People Party to disallow him a seat in Parliament. Russian President Vladimir Putin says locally produced COVID-19 vaccine approved for use. A very good Tuesday evening to all our viewers. This is Prime Zim News. I'm Joel Outskun. We'll start off with a look at our top story this evening. Mahindra Rajapaksa assumed duties as the Prime Minister today. A special ceremony was organized at Temple Trees to mark this occasion. Mahindra Rajapaksa Matituman me Shalabata Sampraapta Vanni Subamuhutin. The event was attended by the Mahasangha and other religious leaders along with the leaders of parties allied to the Sri Lanka Pudhachana Perumuna and elected parliamentarians. The Prime Minister assumed duties amidst religious observances. <laughs> The Prime Minister, who met with the crowd that had attended the ceremony, acknowledged their wishes. Meanwhile, the swearing-in of new ministers and state ministers is scheduled to take place at the Magul Madua of the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic in Kandy. Today, a group including the Army Commander inspected the location of the event that will take place under the patronage of President Gotabe Rajapaksa. The swearing-in ceremony is set to get underway at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. Twenty-eight cabinet ministries and forty state ministries of the government were announced yesterday. The subjects of the ministers were published via an extraordinary gazette notification. These ministries have been established in line with President Gota Biraj Paksa's manifesto titled Vistas of Prosperity and Splendor to pave the way for the country's future. The naming of seven institutions as guidance and coordinating centres for matters of national importance is a special feature listed out in the gazette. Among them are the Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, the Information and Communication Technology Agency, Computer Emergency Readiness Team, the Board of Investment, Colombo Port City Project, Telecom and its subsidiaries, and all IT parks. Several significant features can be observed in the division of ministries and their subjects. The Department of Archaeology has been brought under the purview of the Ministry of Defence. The Sri Lanka Police has been brought under the State Ministry of Internal Security, Home Affairs and Disaster Management. Another specialty is that the state ministries have been divided in keeping with the President's manifesto. Accordingly, a state ministry has been established for financial and capital markets and public enterprise reforms. The institutions held by the Treasury Secretary under the revival of underperforming enterprises or underutilized assets act have been brought under the ministry. A state ministry has also been set up for Samurdi, household economy, microfinance, self-employment, business development and for public resources development. Regional development banks, the Department of Samurdi Development and the Social Security Board have been brought under its purview. A state ministry for regional cooperation has been established with the Lakshman Khadiragama Institute being brought under its purview. The National Institute of Education and the National Education Commission has been brought under the State Ministry of Education Reforms, Open Universities and Long Distance Learning Promotion. Bhikkhu Universities, Buddha and Pali University and the Piriven Education Board have been brought under the State Ministry of Dhamma Schools, Bhikkhu Education, Piriveners and Buddhist Universities. The University Grants Commission, all state universities and higher education institutes have been brought under the Education Ministry. A state ministry has been set up for pharmaceutical production, supply and regulation. 
the State Pharmaceutical Corporation, State Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Corporation and the National Medicines Regulatory Authority are under its purview. The State Timber Corporation is the only body under the Ministry of Wildlife and Forest Conservation. The Department of Wildlife Conservation and the Department of Forest Conservation have been brought under the State Ministry of Wildlife Conservation, conservation measures including construction of elephant fences, afforestation and forest resource development. A new State Ministry has been set up for paddy and pulses, organic food, vegetables, fruits, development of onion and potato cultivation, seed production and high technology farming. The National Fertilizer Secretariat, State Fertilizer Companies and the Ceylon Fertilizer Corporation have been brought under the State Ministry of Fertilizer Production and Supply, Organic Fertilizer and Pesticide Regulation. A state ministry has been set up for livestock, farm promotion and dairy and egg related industries. The Department of Animal Production and Health has been brought under its purview. The Mahavali Authority has been brought under the state ministry for the development of canals and infrastructure of settlements near the Mahavali zone. The affiliated bodies of the Agrarian Services Department and the Department of Irrigation have been brought under the state ministry of rural paddy fields and tanks, reservoirs and irrigation development. The Land Use Policy Planning Department and the Department of Land Settlement have been listed under the State Ministry of Land Management, Lands for Public Enterprises and Property Development. The State Ministry is expected to initiate a program to encourage young entrepreneurs, provide investment opportunities in government lands and to provide 100,000 plots of land to the youth in coordination with banks and other relevant institutions. Another state ministry has been established for the promotion of coconut, kitul, palmyra and rubber cultivations and the production of products related to industries and export diversification. The Palmyra Development Board, Rubber Development Department, Coconut Cultivation Board and the Coconut Development Authority are under its purview. Another state ministry has been established for the development of small plantation crops including sugarcane, maize, cashew, pepper, cinnamon, cloves and beetle related industries and export promotion. The Sri Lanka Cashew Corporation, Hingurana and Kantale Sugar Factories and the Lanka Sugar Company are among the state bodies under this ministry. In addition to Ministry of Ports and Shipping, a state ministry has been set up for warehouse facilities, container yards, port facilities and boat and shipping industries development. The state ministry has been tasked with developing container yards in Paliogoda, Veyangoda and Ratmalana with the assistance of the private sector and also the development of road and rail container yards. It has also been mandated with developing the Gaul, Kankasanthure and Trincomalee ports based on the regional requirement and the national economy. Maganaguma has been brought under the State Ministry of Rural Roads and Other Infrastructure. The Sri Lanka Transport Board and the Department of Motor Traffic have been brought under the State Ministry of Vehicle Regulation, Bus Transport Services, Railway Compartments and Motor Vehicle Industries. The National Transport Commission and the Department of Railways are the only entities falling under the purview of the Ministry of Transport. A state ministry has been gazetted for the development of infrastructure in rural areas and sports in schools. The National Institute of Sports Science, National Sports Council, Institute of Sports Medicine and the Sri Lanka Anti-Doping Agency have been brought under the ministry. The Department of National Zoological Gardens and the Department of National Botanical Gardens have been brought under the Ministry of Tourism. The Civil Aviation Authority, Airport and Aviation Services Limited, Sri Lankan Airlines and its subsidiaries have been brought under the State Ministry of Aviation Services and Export Zone Development. The State Ministry of Batik, Handloom Textiles and Local Garment Manufacturing, State Ministry of Gem and Jewellery Related Industries, State Ministry of Postal Services and Professional Development in Journalism, State Ministry of Women and Child Development, Preschools, Primary Education, School Infrastructure Development and Education Services, are some of the other state ministries listed out in the Extraordinary Gazette. News reports have shown that a controversy has arisen over the satellite images of some constructions that have been constructed in two places in Hambantota. According to news reports, a satellite image obtained by Google Maps showed a row of buildings near the Hambantota port that had been constructed in the formation of the words China SW. Another satellite image showed that a row of buildings near the Makkala airport had been constructed in the formation of the word CHEC that stands for the China Harbour Engineering Corporation. Another set of buildings has been constructed to portray the formation of a plane. In the wake of this controversy, the Chinese embassy in Colombo tweeted that the initial plan was to construct the buildings to form the 
word China, the symbol of a heart, and SLK. However, the embassy said that the building had to be extended as the business of the port was increasing. The tweet noted that the constructions are a story of development and love. Meanwhile, the spokesperson of China's foreign ministry had expressed the following views on Sri Lanka during a media briefing yesterday. The Chinese foreign minister, Zhao Lijian, expressed the following views. China congratulates Mr. Rajapaksa on his swearing in. Premier Li Keqian has sent a congratulatory message to him. The friendly ties between China and Sri Lanka go back a long way. In recent years, the China-Sri Lanka strategic cooperative partnership based on sincere mutual assistance and everlasting friendship has made great strides and bilateral cooperation in various fields has been expanded and deepened. In particular, in the face of the COVID-19, the two governments and the two people have been supporting and assisting each other. Prime Minister Rajapaksa has long been committed to promoting friendly ties with China. China sets great store by its relationship with Sri Lanka. We stand ready to strengthen our traditional friendship and mutually beneficial cooperation with Sri Lanka and move forward with bilateral relations to deliver greater benefit for the two countries and their people. Now China has sent fighter jets across the midline of the Taiwan Strait. At the same time, the U.S. Health Chief Alex Azar visited the island to offer President Donald Trump's support. The show of force comes after China, which claims the island as its own, condemned the visit after a period of sharply deteriorating relations between Beijing and the U.S. China, which threatened unspecified retaliation to the trip, flew J-11 and J-10 fighter aircraft briefly onto Taiwan's side of the sensitive and narrow strait that separates it from its giant neighbor at around 9 a.m., shortly before Mr. Azar met Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen. The Air Force said in a statement released by the Defense Ministry that the aircraft were tracked by land-based Taiwanese anti-aircraft missiles and were driven out by patrolling Taiwanese aircraft. China's defense ministry did not immediately comment. A senior Taiwan official familiar with the government's security planning said China was obviously, quote, targeting Mr. Azar's visit with a very risky move given that the Chinese jets were in range of Taiwan's missiles. The incursion was only the third time since 2016 that Taiwan has said Chinese jets had crossed the strait's median line. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa had told the frontline website of India's Hindu newspaper that he hopes to take forward the wide cooperation between Sri Lanka and India for the mutual benefit of both countries. He had said, quote, As I always say, India is our friend and relation. I am thankful to Prime Minister Modi for his warm wishes. He was the first world leader to call me, unquote. Now, matters concerning ministerial positions, national seats and party leadership are figuring prominently in the political platform. Here's a look at the latest developments in this regard. A discourse has been created on the leadership of the United National Party following its setback at the parliamentary election. General Secretary Akhila Viraj Karyavasam expressed these views following a meeting between former parliamentarians and seniors at the party headquarters at Sirikota yesterday. The party leader has informed us about his decision to step down from his position. Opinions were sought from all those present to appoint a new person to the post. Accordingly, four names were proposed. The four names that have been proposed are Ravi Kauna Naika, myself, Vajirabe Vardhana and Daya Gamage. Although General Secretary Akhila Viraj Karyavasam yesterday said that Ranil Vikramasinghe had decided to resign from his position, a statement issued by the Central Bureau of the United National Party today stated something different. Issuing a statement, the UNP said that party leader Ranil Vikramasinghe had highlighted the need for a new leadership in the party. According to the statement, Ranil Vikramasinghe had said that the working committee would be apprised about this matter during the next meeting after a discussion with the relevant entities. The statement added that Vikramasinghe had pointed out that it was important to restructure the party completely and guide the party onto a winning path. The issue concerning the national list of the Samagi Jana Balavegya has been resolved. Leaders of the parties affiliated to the Samagi Jana Balavegya have agreed to allow leader Sajid Premadasa to reach a final decision in this regard. Leaders of parties affiliated to the Samagi Jana Balavegya convened at the party headquarters in Atul Kote to discuss appointing MPs to the seven national list seats. <laughs> Samagi Jana Balavege, Jati Lesbili Bande, Dredapi Gatatindua, Samagi Jana Balavege, 
නායක සජි ප්‍රේමසම මැතිතුමාට ඒ තීන්දුව ගන්න අයිති අපි කොටස්කාර පක්ෂවල අපි නායක වරණියට බාර කරලා තිනවා ජාතික ලයිෆ් එක ඔබතුමාලට මන්ත්‍රී දූරයක් ලැබුණ නැතු වුණොත් සාධීනවද දිගටම ඉන්නවද එහෙම බලපෑම් කරන්න නැහැ we will not try to influence like that we will make room for the talent to obtain national list seats for the betterment of the country we requested that as a party we requested that before the election as well now they say that there are only seven seats and that those seats will be given to the senior people so we have asked sajit premadasa to make a decision and that we will agree with him ganna tinu apu kiwa paksha nayaka hetiyata sajit premadasa matmata kiwa apu thuma ganna tinu da meke ganna eken pakse tinu da hisa namara We held internal discussions and they were done in a just manner. The points that were made during the discussions are an internal thing. Why should my name be mentioned? I did not get the two-thirds majority, did I? You have to ask that question from elsewhere. You understand who should answer this question, don't you? The problem pertaining to the nationalist representative of our power of people party led by venerable Atrulie Ratana and venerable Galagodatte Nyanasarathera has not been resolved yet. The issue had arisen after some party members claimed that venerable Vedinigama Vimalathisathera who was the general secretary of the party had gone missing. Some members yesterday said that he has been removed from his position. Venerable Vedinigama Vimalathisathera who is accused of being in hiding spoke to news first regarding the matter. I clearly understood that a plot is in motion as the party president together with another group are trying to take control of this regardless of the various remarks that are being made I believe the election commission does not have any dispute over this that is because I had sent the letter first if they are against it they should have issued a letter before that stating that I have been removed from the post while I gave the letter around 200 people were there surrounding the election commission around 50 vehicles gave chase to me the police and the army are rounding up several villagers If I had visited a house for an arms giving a few years ago they are rounding up that as well the government is not supporting me they are supporting my arrest they are not trying to appoint gnana sarathero they are trying to deceive him by promising the national list i shall become the national list representative and then hand it over to gnana sarathero after resigning from it let's sign an agreement i am telling everyone let us meet and discuss that when i went to a place to meet them i was rounded up from all corners they didn't want me to discuss the matter They wanted to arrest me first. I escaped with great difficulty. Hari amarin tama beerilaavi. Mang oye lekang haadru tiki vinadi paha. I haven't spoken to the secretary for even 5 minutes. I met him at the Sadham Sevena. Ratnathero said that everything is sorted and there are no political problems here. Meanwhile, we are now informed that the secretary is going to take oaths on the 12th. This is being manipulated from France. Three conditions have been put forward by the Thero. that is to wipe out the problems of the asgiri mahasanga to revoke an arrest warrant issued on him and to provide him security if ratnathero with 15 years of experience cannot find this can they identify the body language of the person what is he going to do after occupying the parliament seat if this is not resolved then both of us will lose the seat you can a suicide game me gagne venerable arambe pola ratnasara thera from the our power of people party arrived at the Padukka police station last night our correspondent reported that he had come to the rescue of a person who was taken into custody by the police upon information that venerable vedinigama vimalathi sathera had gone missing it was a small incident that had taken place it is a political problem and nothing big when i was returning after resolving this they had kept my friend here i went to sort out the matter with the police Meanwhile a protest stage opposite the election commission demanding that the national seat of the our power of people party be given to venerable galagoda atte nyana sarathera chairman of the national election commission mahinda desha priya arrived at the location during the protest
Meanwhile, Ilangay Tamil Arasu Kachi leader Mave Senadiraja expressed the following views on the crisis surrounding the nationalist seat of the Tamil National Alliance. No female candidate was elected from the northern or eastern areas. Sasikala, the wife of Ravi Raj, obtained a considerable amount of votes from Jaffna. Therefore, I am requesting Sambandhan to appoint her to the nationalist seat. A large number of people, including Sri Lankan expatriates, are anticipating that I would be sent to parliament. They have been urging me to agree to it. I gave my consent as they said that the Ilangay Tamil Arasu Kachi must be protected. They said that if Mahavai Senadi Raja agrees, they would inform the party secretary Ture Rajasingham about it. Therefore, I believe that it would take place. However, I was later told that Sambandhan had decided with Sumandiran and Sridharan. They have appointed Kale Arasan to the seat without any discussion. The decision that has been taken without informing the leaders of the three constituent parties cannot be accepted. Kale Arasan's name has been included in the national list. We do not oppose the appointment of a candidate from the Ampara district. However, we do not agree upon decisions that are made without consulting all the parties. Details about a threat level that elected MP Dr. Gaya Shan Navanandana was revealed during a media briefing today. Gaya Shan Navanandana contested from the Munragali district, representing the democratic left front of Vasudevanana Ekara. MP Gayashan has been threatened by a drug smuggler in the area. When a complaint was lodged with the police OIC in the area, the OIC had informed this individual in question. This, this drug smuggler had then come to MP Gayashan with a group of people carrying weapons. Luckily, area residents were there at that time. Luckily, area residents were there at that time. Because of that, the group couldn't cause any damage. He went to meet the OIC, but he wasn't there. So he lodged a complaint in writing with the OIC's assistant. Accordingly, the IGP and the DIG have instructed to provide him police security. I asked them not to allow Valijanaka's moonshine be the deciding fact. However, someone had informed him about this and 10 minutes later he came and met me. I have the video. He came up to me and asked me as to why I mentioned that he sells illicit liquor. I informed him that I did not say that. He constantly asked why I said he sells illicit liquor. I did not answer at all. I had the record with me. Meanwhile, journalists questioned as to whether Vasudeva Nana Ekara will receive a ministerial portfolio. <laughs> SM Marikara expressed the following views during a media briefing organized by the Samagi Janabala Vege. These results showcase how disappointed the people are with the way the previous government conducted its affairs. The people have decided that it is not the best interest of the country for the President and the Prime Minister to represent two separate parties. However, we respect the mandate of the people and we are not prepared to sabotage the plans of the government. We will assess whether they are conducting affairs properly. We will monitor whether the government is attempting to convert this into a dictatorial rule and if it engages in corruption, we will ensure that we will take to the streets with the masses against it. सजित प्रेमदास के नायक अत्य मिस वेन किसी में वड़ा पीलो लगने आप इटा डील कारे और रुत्त के के तू वेन किसी में उम्र आओगे उतने in more news this evening, a group of employees of the Colombo Port City project staged a demonstration today as well. A 
A group of drivers, laborers and supervisors employed at the Port City project staged a protest this morning, citing that they were not called for duty from the 20th of March. These employees, with more than three years of work experience, joined the project in 2017. The group who were attached to a subcontract company of the project charge that around 150 employees have not been called to work in over five months. You all know that the schools have reopened and the country has returned to normalcy. But they kept these gates closed, restricting the employees while the Chinese freely roam. There is evidence that three buses transport around 300 people every morning and evening. If the Chinese have a special pass, they let them travel. The Labour Department is sleeping although we wrote letters every day. We wrote to the Commissioner of Labour, Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana and the Port City Project Manager. We have informed them in writing. Why aren't they getting involved? That is what we want to know. Has this been taken over by the Chinese? There are plenty of people who are suffering because of this. The protesters also charge that those employees in the project do not receive proper facilities. There is no ambulance if something unexpected happens. If we try to stop for like an hour when someone gets injured or sick, the Chinese people shout at us. They are making us work. Is this China or is this Sri Lanka? A medical health officer of the Colombo Municipal Council arrived at the location to inquire into a complaint lodged with the council earlier. <laughs> Meanwhile, officers of the Labour Department also arrived at the location. These people are asking to pay their salaries if the job is completed without terminating their employment abruptly. The EPF letter, attendance sheets and the pay slips were asked via emails. However, they haven't responded. We then sent them a letter via registered post requesting them to come to the office. They didn't turn up then as well. We can't just calculate your salary. We need the documents relating to the EPF and attendance. We asked for the documents for February, March and April. They have filed a case with the Commissioner General of the Western Province. The Mayor of Kurunagala filed a writ petition with the Court of Appeal today seeking an order to prevent the enforcement of the warrant issued for his arrest. Now, the Kurunagala Magistrates Court reissued warrants for the arrest of the Kurunagala mayor and four others yesterday with regard to the case filed over the demolition of a building in Kurunagala with archaeological value. The Kurunagala Police Headquarters Inspector, OIC of the Special Investigations Division, Acting Inspector General of Police, the Director General of Archaeology, the Kurunagala Chief Magistrate and the Attorney General were named as respondents in the petition. The petitioner noted that police had obtained a warrant from the court on the 7th of August to arrest him based on the directives given by the Attorney General, adding that the investigation process and the process to obtain the warrant had violated the law. The Kurunagala Mayor requested the Court of Appeal to issue an interim injunction on the respondents, preventing any attempt to arrest him until the petition is taken up for examination and a verdict is delivered. Operations of the main shopping mall and the public library in Kurnagala, which is administered by the Kurnagala Municipal Council, were disrupted without a reason today. Our correspondent revealed that the shopping mall comprising 212 blocks was closed down this morning for no apparent reason. When the employees of the mall came, everything was closed. Officials attached to the Municipal Council reopened the mall following the intervention of the police. Elsewhere, operations of the Kurnagala Public Library were also disrupted this morning. However, after the recommencement of operations at the shopping mall, operations at the library too recommenced. Although News First inquired regarding the matter from officials attached to the Kurnagala Municipal Council, no one accepted responsibility for the incident. Does the mayor have a right to close down the shops at the Kurnagala Plaza? The Kurnagala Municipal Council earns money by renting out the shops of the plaza to the people. The mayor has exerted his influence and forced officials of the Municipal Council to go on strike. 
the mayor should be held responsible for what is happening in Kurnagala. Warrants have been issued against five people, including the mayor and the commissioner. Not only has the mayor gone into hiding, but he is also attempting to challenge court and disrupt operations in the city. He is also attempting to force people onto the streets to create an opinion claiming he is innocent. We are completely against it. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Attorney General instructed the acting IGP today to enforce the warrants which were issued against five people, including the mayor of Kurnagala. The Attorney General has also instructed the acting IGP to investigate those who are harboring the suspects in question. Based on the directive of the Attorney General, the acting IGP has instructed the senior DIG of the Northwestern Province to probe the matter and to report it to him immediately. The acting IGP has also directed the senior DIG of the Northwestern Province and the SSP of Kurnagala to enforce the warrant through the HQI of the Kurnagala Police and to provide a progress report by the 12th of this month. Police spokesman SSP Jalia Senaratna said that six police teams have been dispatched to locate the suspects. The people of Galagadru have been hit by the lack of clean drinking water. They lament over the absence of a mechanism to provide them with clean water. This water treatment plant in the Gangoda Pitya village in the Galagedar Divisional Secretariat had been constructed to supply water to 200 families in the area. Each family in the village had provided 25,000 rupees and also extended manual labor to the construction of this plant in 2009. In addition to the funds obtained from the people, the Galagedara Pradesh Sabha had obtained more than 5 million rupees from the state purse over this project. This is a miniature version of a large-scale water project. This is how water is collected here. Although we can remove the mud off this small pool of water, it is impractical to do the same in a large-scale project. We have to remove the stones every week. The people don't come forward together. The hopes of these villagers have been shattered as the water project had failed a few years since its commencement. News first made inquiries from the committee that collected money from residents for the project. We have to clean this filter frequently. It costs around 25,000 rupees to clean this. It is difficult to do this manually. The best solution is to obtain water from the nearest river. Water is obtained for irrigation purposes as well. Our members don't have that strength. If the government gives us at least 1.5 million, then we can do it. Villagers say that they have been affected as a result of implementing projects without a long-term goal. We are requesting to implement this water project by installing a new filter. We can then use this pipeline. It can be easily done. A mother and daughter lost their lives in a road accident in Saman by the Malwana Road, Dompe. Ratnamurti Shanti Kumara, 42, and her 19-year-old daughter Thangaraj Tarushika Madhuvanti lost their lives while riding a motorbike from Hangwella to Malwana yesterday. The accident occurred when they were hit by a car travelling in the opposite direction at a high speed. Police said the car driver was unable to control the vehicle, causing the accident. The car had toppled onto the road due to its high speed. Uh, he couldn't control the speed and the car has turned. The body of the car collided here. At that time, the car had collided with a motorcycle and the mother and daughter who were travelling on it. The driver of the motor vehicle has been arrested. Meanwhile, one person died from a head-on collision between a lorry and a tripper truck along the A9 road in Lenadora, Dambulla. A tipper truck travelling from Naula to Dambulla and a lorry travelling in the opposite direction had collided with each other. The lorry assistant lost his life due to the accident. The victim has been identified as a 55-year-old resident of Kiralawa in Dambulla. The driver of the lorry who was seriously injured has been admitted to the Dambulla hospital. The lorry was already there when we arrived. We couldn't get them out. Then we used ropes and pulled them out hard from their legs. 
According to our correspondent, the driver of the tipper truck has been arrested by the Dhamulla police. An SUV belonging to the Badulla police met with an accident today. The jeep had fallen into a 30-foot precipice in the Badulla Kandagulla Muthumal area. According to our correspondent, several police officers were travelling in the vehicle at the time of the accident and two injured officers had been admitted to the Badulla General Hospital. The jeep had met with the accident while returning to the police station after duty. Police suspect that the SUV veered off due to the rain. A man who tried to save a girl who jumped into the Bolgori Reservoir near the Panadura Bandaragama area has drowned. The girl had jumped into the Bolgori Reservoir this morning near the Bandaragama Thunbodi area. A man who was at the location, Tharindu Piris, had jumped into the reservoir to save the girl. These are the scenes that were captured by the mobile phone of a resident while the girl and the young man were floating in the water for a while after jumping into the water. After a while, they were drawn to a deeper place in the reservoir. Meanwhile, another man got into a boat and tried to rescue the girl. A person came and told me that someone had jumped into the river, but when I came running, there was only the girl. They said that the man had gone down. We searched for him but couldn't find him. We rescued the girl. If I have seen him, I would have saved him. I have saved around 15 to 20 people before. The rescued girl was then admitted to the Panadura base hospital. The body of Tharindu Piris, who went missing after drowning, was found this afternoon. The deceased has been identified as a 32-year-old father of one from the Raigami area. <laughs> Former Sri Lankan ambassador to Japan and former head of the Singhala and Mass Media Department at Sri Javadanapuri University, Professor Dhammika Gangana Disanayaka, passed away today. Professor Dhammika Gangana Disanayaka was 62 years old when he passed away today while receiving treatment at the Maragama Pekshaw Hospital. Professor Disanayaka has served as the former chairman of the Sri Lanka Rupavahini Corporation as well as the chairman of the Independent Television Network. Born in Colombo on the 1st of July 1958, Professor Dhammika Gangana Disanayaka is an old boy of Dharmaraj College, Kandy. He holds an honours degree in Singular from the University of Sri Jayawardenpura and has been a lecturer there for nearly three decades. <laughs> Meanwhile, the final rites of the late Atula Sinanayaka were performed at the Borala Cemetery this afternoon. Atula Sinanayaka is the husband of Colombo Mayor Rosie Sinanayaka and the son of former IGP late Stanley Sinanayaka. Many people, including politicians and social activists, came today to pay their last respects to late Atula Senanayaka. Among them was the leader of the United National Party, Rani Vikram Singha, as well as leader of the Samag Janabalavegya, Sajit Premadasa. In sports this evening, it's cricket. Several batsmen, including Angelo Matthews, displayed their batting skills during the second day of the Lanka Premier League today. The game played between the Coles Cricket Club and the Saracens Cricket Club was played at the PSR Oval Ground in Colombo. Taking first list of the wicket, Coles declared the innings at 408 runs for the loss of six wickets. Santosh Gunathilaka, who is shown with the bat, registered a century, while Angela Matthews remained unbeaten on 173. His knock included 12 boundaries and two sixes. I believe that I fulfill my responsibility as a batsman. There is no alternative to playing a game. I feel that playing is the best practice. 
If we have to play Bangladesh, India or any other country, I believe that we are well prepared for that. My plan with Angela Matthews was to declare the innings after putting up a good score on the board. I attempted the deliveries that could be played. We carried on with our partnership. Saracens ended the second day on 113 runs for the loss of two wickets. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka cricket has announced that the Lanka Premier League 2020 tournament has been postponed until November. According to the SLC, this decision had been taken in consideration of the health guidelines stipulated by health officials. The Lanka Premier League 2020 tournament was scheduled to take place from the 28th of August to the 20th of September. This was with the participation of 70 international players and more than 10 international coaches. Well, on that note, we wrap this edition of Prime Time News. Thank you very much for stopping by. More news follows on our award-winning website. That is www.newsfirst.lk. Signing out from the News First Desk, I'm Joel Outskun, together with our interpreter, Brian DeCruz. Take care.